Hey everyone, welcome back to Portal of Wisdom. I'm back today with another story for you. I know it's been a little while since I posted and things have been a little crazy around here with a couple of health issues and the kids going back to school and just getting back into a normal routine. So I haven't posted quite as much as I normally do lately, but anyhow, I do have a story for you today. And the story today is the Lost Soldier Mine in Arizona. So this one starts out in 1869. There was a gentleman named Abner McKeever, and he lived in central Arizona, west of present-day Phoenix, near a large bend in the Gila River known as Gila Bend. The present-day town of Gila Bend is located fairly close to here. So he and his family were attacked by a large band of Apache warriors. And the location of their ranch was a long distance away from the protection of Fort McDowell or Fort Lowell. So there was very little protection for them and they had to fend for themselves. And at the end of the Apache raid on their ranch, the Apaches made away with over 20 head of their horses, six rifles, ammunition, food, clothes, and sadly, Belle McKeever, Abner's very own daughter. So after the Apaches had left and had destroyed the ranch, Abner rode out to Maricopa Wells, which was not too far away. Maricopa Wells was a popular and reliable watering hole with many pools of fresh groundwater. Stagecoaches, miners, travelers, mail carriers, and even soldiers frequented Maricopa Wells for the plentiful fresh spring water. So as Abner entered the small population of Maricopa Wells, he told his emotional story and he tried to round up every man that he could to come along and help him retrieve his daughter. So there were close to a dozen and a half soldiers stationed at Maricopa Wells and they had posted guard here. They were protecting this freshwater source. And Abner tried to persuade some of them to come with him on his journey to retrieve his daughter. And in the end, he persuaded six soldiers to come with him. And he also gained five miners nearby that also came along on the quest. So as soon as this posse headed off after the Apaches, then when they started to catch up with them, but they were still a good distance, the Apaches were a good distance ahead of them still. The Apaches obviously saw that they were being trailed and they split into many smaller bands that scattered in different directions. So at this point the Apaches were too far ahead for the men to see which faction that split off may contain Abner's daughter. So at this point, the posse had to split up themselves and chase each group of the Apaches in different directions. During this chase, one of the groups of the three posse members, which consisted of Private Joe Wormley, Private Eugene Flanagan, and Sergeant Crosswaith, were chasing down a group of four Apaches. They had originally been heading in a southerly direction from Maricopa Wells, which Maricopa Wells is about eight miles north of current day Maricopa, Arizona. So they had covered what some believe to be around 80 miles when their two or when two of their horses had given out due to exhaustion during during an exchange of gunfire. So at this point, the horses are exhausted and collapsing, and at this point, the sergeant instructed his men to shoot the two spent horses and hide behind them for cover as they continued a close gunfight with the Apaches. Once the two horses were dead, the four Apaches laughed at the men and then rode off into the hills escaping. So the three soldiers were now alone and their only remaining horse was there and 
there was no sign of any of the other men from the posse. But now it was too late. So they feared that the Apaches could come back at any point and they would be sitting ducks. And now they only had one horse left. So the soldiers decided that they needed to try to retrace their steps and head back in the direction they came. So they intended to find the spot where they split from the rest of the posse and then see if they could link back up with any of them. And as they traveled along, they came upon a small mountain range and then stumbled across a granite wash that included a spring. And this spring was very thick with vegetation around it and so they finally had a good source of water so they could relax and rehydrate and let their only remaining horse drink and eat a lot of the vegetation and they had as much water as they wanted now. So as the men relaxed next to the spring in the shade they glanced into the spring and they noticed some gold nuggets. And it was said that these nuggets were that were in the spring were pretty small and still fairly rough and it appeared they came from somewhere above and had landed on the ground or in the water very recently. So a couple of the nuggets were a bit larger, like the size of a small coin. And as they looked around, they noticed a couple of veins of quartz up above on the side of the mountain overlooking the spring. These veins of quartz appeared to be laced in gold. One vein was pretty small and narrow, but it was laced with beautiful gold. And the other, they said, was much larger, and it was a foot or a foot and a half wide and many feet long, and was also laced with gold as well. So the men remained at this spring and sat in the shade to regain their strength and composure. And due to the gold located here, they stayed for a few days and dug out a lot of the exposed gold from the veins of quartz with their knives and any tools that they had. So they had freed enough gold-laden quartz at a certain point that they decided that it was time to head off and they used some of their clothes and the sergeant's jacket to make makeshift bags to carry this gold and they loaded it onto the horse. Now that the horse had regained its strength due to plenty of water and rest and vegetation to eat, it was able to carry the load of gold as they headed back the direction that they believed the Gila River was. So this trip became very taxing on them as the horse was carrying a heavy load of gold and you know the men were walking alongside of it and probably getting very tired after a, a good long distance and there was still a long ways to walk and they only had what water they could take in their canteens from the spring which also didn't last very long in the desert as they made their way back. So they needed to make it back to the Gila River so they could hydrate again and let their horse recoup and you know from going through the desert with such a load. Now living in this area I know that it depends on the time of year whether the Gila River even has any water in it at all as most of the year it is dry but then again if you are lucky at the right time of the year like maybe during monsoon season in the late summer you may find a small pool of water here and there depending on recent rains or after some recent rains it will be flowing but maybe not for too terribly long. So when they got approximately within a day's walk of the Gila River their horse could go no more and and had lie down and never got back up and it soon died most likely from exhaustion and dehydration and overwork. So after the horse died, the men split up or somehow became separated. The details here are a little bit sketchy.
It's possible they split up because the men at this point had varying abilities to make it back to the Gila River. This could be the case as Private Wormley was the only one to actually make it back to the Gila River, leaving his companions behind. Maybe he was the man at this point that was in the best condition and well enough to potentially make it to the river and hopefully find help for them. So when he arrived at the river, he was suffering from exhaustion and was delirious, and some men near the river did find him. So there must have been at least a little bit of water in the river at this point. He told the men about his comrades and the gold that they had found, and apparently the gold was still with the dead horse at this point. So the men and Private Wormley headed out to find the two remaining men and the dead horse. So the men did find Private Flanagan, who was near death at this point. He could no longer move on, and he had collapsed, but he was still barely alive. And as Flanagan lay there on the ground, he whispered details as to the direction of the dead horse and the spring. So he lasted, it was said, about an hour or so, and then he, he died. Not far from Private Flanagan, they found Sergeant Crosswaith. He was also dead, and in his pockets they did discover some gold-laced quartz. Private Wormley spent the next ten years looking for this lost spring with the veins of gold above it. He was never able to relocate it, and the party he was with was never able to locate it. So Private Wormley spent ten years looking for it, and about ten years later he died in Phoenix in 1880 without a penny to his name. So it's been speculated that the mountains where they discovered this spring were the Harquahalla Mountains, which later produced many rich mines, or the Sierra Colorado Mountains west of Gila Bend. So some of these speculated mountain ranges for this location of the spring had me a little confused as they were not in a southerly direction of Gila Bend or Maricopa Wells. Um, and it was said to be in a southerly direction that they took off to begin with when they went chasing the Apaches. But then I realized if you're chasing a band of Native American warriors heading south and they all split up and went in different directions, you very well then could be following them in an entirely new direction like west or northwest and you still likely will not be going continually in that direction. So as you pursue them, they may gradually change directions again. So you could be going west for a while, and before you know it, you are chasing them north, and you pass your starting location continuing north or west. And this could explain the situation and the reasons for the speculated mountain ranges being different than what you would expect at first when hearing the direction that they headed to begin with. Though they started off in a southerly direction, they could have ended up north and west of where they started their pursuit. Also, I would guess that the rescue party would also know which direction they had to go to get to the dying men and the dead horse and would have a good idea of the general direction that they came from. Also, people that knew Private Wormley may also have been aware of the direction he continued to look for this lost spring, giving them a general idea of the direction or approximate location or those possible mountain ranges that this spring could be located within. Also, we don't know exactly where along the Gila River it was that Private Wormley was found. And it does run all the way to the western border of Arizona. So it is possible that this lost spring and these ledges of gold could still be out there, especially if the spring has dried up or if it only flowed in times of wetter weather or only after rains. And we know that at this point it does seem like the Gila River had some water in it. So maybe there had been recent rains and maybe the spring was flowing. And maybe it's one that doesn't flow that often. We don't really know here. So these mountain ranges are still very desolate. But 
It's possible the location could have been found and turned into one of the many of the gold mines that are dotting the Arizona Desert Mountains. But maybe it hasn't been found. So the reason I explained in so much detail about the possible change in directions as relating to the mountain ranges where the spring was being looked for is that this kind of stuff on my channel will continually get negative comments from people. It seems a lot of people will look at a map and then say those mountains aren't south of Gila Bend or south of Maricopa Wells, so the story must be false or made up. And I think the casual listener may not realize what really happens when you are out there in the desert and in the mountains exploring. But I think the diehard desert explorers and prospectors know immediately that people rarely proceed in a straight line when exploring and prospecting in the desert mountains. And it can get confusing and it can turn you around without realizing it. And this is why many people get lost in the desert each year and die. Things can look the same in different directions. It can be hard to trace your steps and you can end up going in an entirely different direction than you started to begin with and you didn't realize it. So anyhow, it's an unfortunate thing, but it happens especially to the inexperienced out there. But anyhow, that is the story of the Lost Soldier Mine, which might still be out there or it's possible it was found and turned into a mine we don't really know because we don't know specifically where it was or where this spring was so you can leave any thoughts in the comments and thanks for listening